Good morning. Well, let me invite you to get your Bibles, and we'll be looking in Jeremiah chapter 33 in just a few moments. And while you're getting your Bible, let's sing. Bright in the corner where you are, bright in the corner where you are, someone far from arbor you may guide across the bar, bright in the corner where you are. Well, I'm so glad that uh, you're tuning in today so we can worship the Lord together. I heard the story the other day of a Sunday school teacher who was teaching her children the story about Lot and his wife and family as they left Sodom and Gomorrah, and God had told them that they could not look back. And uh, Lot's wife looked back, and that she turned into a pillar of salt. And a little boy raised his hand and spoke up and said, my mom was driving down the road the other day, and she looked back and she turned into a telephone pole. Well, I guess uh, we've got to be careful. So, uh, but anyway, last week I spoke on, or well, I should say recently I spoke on increasing our faith. And today I'd like to entitle the message, Putting Our Faith to Work. James 2.26 teaches us that without faith, works is dead. We can have a lot of faith in the Lord, but what good is our faith if we don't exercise our faith and put it to work? So today we think about faith. As we do, let's consider our prayer life. The Bible tells us in Job 14.1 that man that is born a woman is a few days and full of trouble. So when we are in trouble, and uh, usually we are in one way or another, remember Psalm 46, 1 that said, God is our refuge and our strength, a very present help in trouble. Jeremiah himself found himself in deep trouble. The message that he preached had been rejected. He was thrown into prison. And he no doubt felt depressed, discouraged, perhaps forgotten, forsaken. For sure, it was not a very joyous occasion. So when we're in trouble, we should think of Jeremiah 33, verse 1 through 3. Let's read it together. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah the second time, while he was yet shut up in the court of the prison, saying, Thus saith the Lord, the maker thereof, the Lord that formed it, to establish it, the Lord is his name. And then the Lord said, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Let us pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I pray today that you will teach us very simply, how we can exercise our faith and what you expect of us in prayer and how we should ask. And Lord, I pray that certainly our faith will be proven as we obtain the things that we ask for through prayer. Again, speak to our hearts. Meet our spiritual needs this hour. I pray in Jesus' name, amen. I want you to notice three specific things in verse 3 of Jeremiah 33. First of all, a simple command. The Lord said, call upon or unto me. How many times have we had perhaps a big job to do or something that took a long time or whatever? And later we were telling somebody about it and they say, oh, you should have given me a call. I would have been more than happy to help you. But the truth is we didn't call. We didn't ask. And in Matthew 7, 7, it says, ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. The problem is in James 4, 2, it says, ye have not because ye ask not. 
Now God says here in Jeremiah 33, 3, call unto me. Now that seems to me more than just a request. It's more than an invitation. In fact, it's a direct command. He said, call unto me. So God expects us, obviously, to call upon him. In the New Testament, the Bible tells us in 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, to pray without ceasing. In Luke 18, in verse 1, it says men ought always to pray. So how should we pray? Well, first of all, we should pray respectfully. You know, some people, it seems like when they go to prayer, they kind of act like they're ordering God around to do certain things. But we need to consider the one that we're speaking to, realizing that he is the almighty creator of the universe. And so we should approach God very respectfully, realizing who we are and who he is. So in doing that, then secondly, we would pray humbly. In James chapter 4, in verse 6 through 10, I would like for us to read James 4, verse 6. But he giveth more grace. Wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil, and he'll flee from you. But draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted, and mourn, and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning, and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Again, humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he shall lift you up. Remember as we approach God and we come to him, God says in Psalm 66, 18, if you regard iniquity in your heart, the Lord will not hear you. So certainly as we come to God, we, know, we need to come repenting of our sin, confessing our sins. And God said, if we confess and forsake our sins, that the Lord would cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So we need to get right with God, pray respect of, respectfully, pray humbly, and then we can pray boldly because we have a great loving God. I love Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, it didn't say that we ought to come in a proud, arrogant manner. We ought to be very humble. But we can come boldly, realizing that God will keep His Word. And then we need to pray expectantly. God wants to bless us. And the Bible is full of some very precious prayer promises. Listen to just a few of these. Matthew 21, 22, And all things whatsoever you ask in prayer, believing, ye shall receive. I love Matthew 7, 11. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall your Father which is in heaven give good things to them that ask Him? And then Romans 8, 32, He that spared not His own Son, but delivered Him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Now, if we have an active faith and we believe God, any one of these promises ought to cause us to want to pray. Now, first we saw in Jeremiah 33, verse 3, that God said to call a simple command. But secondly, we see a sure reply for God said, I will answer thee. Now, he didn't say, I might answer. Didn't say, hey, I'll try to get back to you about that. But he said, I will. I will answer thee. We have all no doubt called people, and, but they don't answer. But rest assured, God will always answer because he's always there. 
We don't get a busy signal or we don't get an answer machine. God said He will answer. Now what God promises, He will fulfill. If God said it, you can count on it. And He will do what He said. I believe God is anxious to hear and to answer our prayers. God can do anything, anything but fail. Neil Moody said, God never made a promise that was too good to be true. Man's promises are often broken or not kept, leaves us disappointed. But listen to Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent or change his mind. Meaning, hath he said and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Certainly, God will answer when we pray. And then thirdly in this verse, call unto me the simple command, and I will answer thee the sure reply. But now we see a supernatural, spectacular, surprising result. Because he said, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Ephesians 3.20 now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that worketh in us. Did you pick up those words? Do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And Jeremiah in the verse, our text today, that he'll show us great and mighty things which thou knowest not. You see, that's the surprising part. God gives us much more than what we can even expect. I remember one time praying uh, one day and asking God for a, a car. A car that was desperately needed. And before the day out, somebody actually gave a car. Now when I prayed, I have to be honest, I was not expecting a, a really a, a nice car, but just something to get around in. But God provided a very nice car that day from somebody that I had not even expected would do such a thing. He'll do great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. And then in Jeremiah 32, 17, it says, O oh, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth but thy, with thy, but thy great power, by thy great power and stretched out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Now, it may be hard for us. In fact, it may be impossible for us, but God has unlimited power. You know, I love that little song. God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. We used to sing it with the children. And let me sing it this morning. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Oh, I was thinking in preparation of this message, how the Israelites and the inhabitants of Jericho found that out when God caused the walls of Jericho to crumble and God gave them a great victory. And then I thought of the hungry people they gathered that day when Jesus was teaching and they became hungry. But they found out that Jesus could take a little boy's lunch and bless it and feed the multitudes of people. And then I thought of King Hezekiah and the children of Israel found out the power of God as they were surrounded 
by 185,000 Assyrian soldiers. And then in the night, an angel of the Lord smote them. And they were defeated. Then I think how the children of Israel found out the power of God when they found themselves approaching the Red Sea and the Egyptian army quickly coming after them and nowhere to go and how God opened up the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. Yeah, they found out the power of God. And then Abraham and Sarah found that out when God promised them a son in their old age and gave them Isaac. The multitudes have found it out when Jesus raised the dead, caused the lame to walk, cleansed the lepers, caused the deaf to hear. You see, my friends, what God promises, He will do. Millions have found it out when God answered their prayer. And my friends, we can find it out also. You lack wisdom, James 1.5 says, If any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God, who giveth to every man liberally, who ask in faith, and wavereth not. You need direction from God. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding all thy ways. Acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. You have a need. Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. You may say today, Well, preacher, I believe God. Then let me say, Prove it. Prove your faith. Put your faith to work. Perhaps you found it out when you believed God and took God at His word when He said in Malachi 3.10, Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me, test me in other words, how therewith saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. And then think of the millions who have found out that God keeps His Word and found out His power when God changed their lives. Think of all the multitudes of people who have been helplessly enslaved and addicted and bound by sin. And then they found out when they called upon Jesus that He miraculously delivered them and changed their lives and are now living a new life with purpose and meaning in Christ. One day on the way into work, I turned on the Glenn Beck radio program, and he was interviewing a lady by the name of Virginia Prodan. I think this radio program was aired on October 26, 2021. She was a lady who had come from Romania, And she said during her life, and she was seeking truth, she became an attorney, but could not find truth. And one day come into her office, and she was so down and so dejected, she indicated to her secretary that she thought she was going to just quit what she was doing. And the secretary said, but somebody's in your office waiting on you. And she went in and there was a man in there and she said he had such joy and peace and had such a a positive attitude and seemed so happy that she looked at him and said, I wish that I had what you had. And the man invited her to church. And she went. And when she got to church, she discovered that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. And she said, I finally found the truth. And the truth was in Jesus Christ. And her life was changed. Now I would like to challenge you today 
to exercise your faith in Christ. Come to Him. Maybe you're saying today, I also want my life to change. I want to discover truth. Then I invite you to come to Christ and trust Him today. And remember, God cannot lie. Let God be true. Every man a liar. God will do everything that He said He would do. But we must put our faith to works. For faith without works is dead. Let's pray together. Our Heavenly Father, I pray that you might take this simple message today. Challenge our hearts to have faith in you. And Lord, then may we exercise that faith. And that we might call upon you. That we might see great and mighty things. Which we don't even begin to realize. For we ask it in Jesus' name. And remember, the Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. The Lord is good, tell it that others may know. Tell of His goodness and tell of His love. Tell how He's coming from heaven above. The Lord is good, tell it wherever you go. God bless you and thanks for listening.